I suppose I will start. Ch this. It wasn't. To. He was. This. It. Re his. Ha he, the. Th The trip to work took him by several blocks. He considered early morning to be an extremely pleasant time of day. Universal euphoria. Although, euphoria usually precedes inevitable death. As soon as he went into the park, he saw a kid in ragged clothes running away from a pack of stray dogs. His eyes caught a swiftly ticking clock hand. It was unclear what had made you so anxious. Fear of dogs or of being late to work. However, he had had no chance to interfere. The picture of the kid falling down on the ground breaking skin on his knees, flashed before his eyes. Then of the dogs, losing all interest in him after that. You immediately felt nauseous. Everything went dark, and it seemed to him that he was looking at himself through the eyes of the kid. Just like when he was a child, Deja vu! In order to justify his actions to himself, he took the handkerchief with his initials and handed it to the kid. Before the latter could say anything, you ran away to avoid further conversation. In a hurry, he went in the wrong direction, unaware of it until he ran into a locked gate on his way. He casually turned around and went to work. He was almost there when he saw his boss enter the office building. He took it as his personal failure, although his watch showed that he still had several minutes. Yu barely got into the office when he noticed two male silhouettes behind him. He turned around to see his boss and a man he had never seen before, a little further away. Figuring that they would have to be introduced to each other, he turned to the stranger first. Let me introduce myself. You. My name is Frank. And you? To avoid unnecessary explanations, you took a name tag from his table and pointed to it. Yes, despite the fact that there was no live communication with clients, the work charter required name tags, probably to remember his name. Wow, that's a very unusual name. Nice to meet you. It is the only unusual detail of my life. An awkward pause hung in the air. The boss, standing behind Frank, frowned and cast a reproachful glance at you. Frank is our security guard starting today. Oh, we have nothing to... A security guard. Some of my important documents are missing. There are only two of us. What kind of documents? That I cannot tell you. You mean you suspect me? 
No, I do not. Eliminating any opportunity to continue this conversation, the boss turned around and went into his office. The room plunged into silence. You got down to some clerical work. You found a moment and took the morning letter out of his pocket. Glancing at the address line, a chill went through Yu's body for a split second. From Irina. Yu was confused by the seal on the envelope, indicating the place of departure. No leave grad. Is she really coming back to Kenlot? He said out loud. Suddenly, there was a curious voice saying, Who is coming? You did not answer and continued reading. Dear you, my doctor's suspicions are confirmed. I have the same disease that struck you. I thought it over and decided that we need to break up. It may seem that something like this should bring people closer, but it would be unfair to myself. We can have our last date on the morning of April 3rd in the Seafront Cafe, and then I will leave Cannot and go abroad. He felt dizzy. You hurried to the cafe. It is uncertain whether he actually wanted to find her there or hoped for the opposite. One way or another, when he was in the appointed place, Darina was not there. However, he saw a familiar kid on the porch of the cafe's veranda. His injured knee was bandaged with a similar handkerchief with Yu's initials on it. Yu's mind was clouded. The kid handed Yu his own handkerchief. What for? Keep it. Your nose is bleeding. The kid occupied himself with a scab on his knee. Oh